Idleman Unplugged is part of the Edify Podcast Network. I want to see your face Pass me by the crowds of people The priest who sing your praise Hello, my name is Shane Eidelman, and I'm the pastor of Westside Christian Fellowship in Leona Valley, California. It is my personal heart and goal for you to see truth through a biblical perspective. I hope that you enjoy this segment of Eidelman Unplugged. What is guilt by association? A lot of times, you know, let's say, uh, well, it depends. As pastors, you, you know, you're at an event and, um, you know, maybe another person that's questionable is there at an event or you share something with and that person material that you share is questionable, maybe a little bit questionable and, and people get concerned with that. And so, you know, it, it is a hard balance to find. Um, I remember, you know, there's a Christian leader who was asked to speak at the Mormon Tabernacle. Uh, this large Mormon tabernacle on uh, who, who the reality of Christ is. And he passed it up because he didn't want to give people the, the wrong impression. But then another uh, Christian leader decided to speak at the Mormon tabernacle. And uh, he talked about Christ and he th- felt it was a good opportunity. And so, you know, it, it's, it's you have to be careful because you don't want to just send the wrong message. You don't want to um, give people the wrong impression. And you don't want to just dismiss heretical teachings and different things. So let, let me tackle a few of these things. So when I post something, let's say by Francis Chen, uh, people start, you know, calling me heretical, uh, or Mark Driscoll, heretical, or, um, what was the other one? Marcus Rogers. And some of you know who these people are. Some of you don't. And so um, I want to speak to that a little bit. Number one is, let's say, for example, Francis Chan. Um, what happened is he was he went to John MacArthur Seminary, the master seminary, <clears throat> planted the church in Simi Valley and, um, you know, kind of just stayed within that that close knit group, but always believed in the in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but I believe was was kind of quiet about it. And then um, he came out about it and just opened to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, there was a friendship people saw with a person by the name of uh, Mike Bickle. Uh, and I, I know Mike not real well, but I've had him on a podcast. I know people real close to him. And, um, you know, I, I don't have concerns with these people like some of you do. The reason is I do my I do my due diligence. I read both sides of it. I look at their their statement of faith. I listen to their sermons. What is their heart? Uh, what are they teaching? Because you can't go to all these heresy hunter websites and YouTube channels where these guys are actually making money based on your likes and based on your shares. And they put down anybody that doesn't dis- doesn't agree with them. So, um Mike Bickle was part of the Kansas City Prophets, and you know there's some controversy there for sure. I don't think that was a good direction at all. But that was you're talking decades ago, and uh, the people I know, you know, that know Mike personally, actually spend time with him. A great ministry, great heart. And so Francis Chan was with Mike Bickle, and if you're from John MacArthur Seminary, that's a big no, 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 no. How dare you? How dare you go and and fellowship with these charismatic nuts? And uh, it's sad because these guys really have no bearing on the truth. They just hear something and they run with it. And so Francis spoke at a large gathering. I think it was called The Send a few years ago. And uh, he was there speaking to 85,000 people, I think. And then Todd White was there. Benny Hinn was there. And he spoke and took a picture with Todd. I don't think he knew who Todd was, really. He heard him speak and, and then took a picture with him. Obviously, he knows who Benny Hinn is. But um, so if somebody asked me to speak to 85,000 people about the power of the Holy Spirit or the resurrection or Christ, and somebody that's questionable is there, you know, you got to take that to prayer. I don't, I don't think I would pass that opportunity up uh, because... That's not necessarily endorsement where some people say, yes, it is endorsement. And, you know, I, I kind of see where they're coming from. That's why it's a gray area and you have to take it to the Lord. And, um, you know, and, and Francis was just there, got that picture taken 
and then it goes out. But see, these people are, are already looking to shoot him with friendly fire just because he's praying for people. And you, you should check out that clip on the mission field and people are being healed and set free. Everybody's praying for is being healed and the gifts of the spirit. And now he's hanging out with some of these charismatic people. And, and so now they're throwing darts at him and, and throwing rocks at him. And, and so that's what happened with Francis. So I've no, I mean, you know, we talked recently, uh, last month at an event, um, reached out to him and, and, you know, it's, it's, to me, talking to everyone that knows him, I think he's been hurt a lot by people because the people that don't have the right information, same people that, that throw rocks at him, throw rocks at me because they don't understand that charismatic is biblical. Uh, weirdness is not. I've got a lot of questions myself with people like Benny Hinn, but is he changing? Has he repented? Is he, is he coming back to the Lord and, and, and rebuking the prosperity gospel? And so just because you take a picture with someone, actually, I took a picture with Francis Chan. Uh, I'll try to find it somewhere. And I wrote an article about it and, um, and people just lost their mind because here's this picture with Francis Chan, like I'm endorsing him, but it was a great event. He preached his heart out. The funny thing is I, uh, I had the guy, the guy who took the picture gave him my phone. I didn't even know who it was. It's uh, Derek Carr. He was a quarterback for the Raiders and he was speaking. So I'm sorry. I don't know you. I don't follow football. So that was funny, but it's just, it's just funny. People are so, you know, some, some of those negative Nellies and armchair quarterbacks aren't even Christians. They're not even believers or they've got such a hard heart and they are so arrogant and it, it's sad. And so with Francis, I have no problem sharing his material. I have no problem sharing some of his videos. Uh, I think he's solid. I think a lot more people. I mean, you, if you've heard him, if you hear him preach, even recently, I heard him preach last month on June, around June 10th or so at an event. It was, it was just life changing. Uh, and then you have, you know, if I post something by Marcus Rogers, uh, Marcus Rogers has posted some of my articles before. And I, I post some of his videos and I want to get him on my podcast because um, he doesn't believe in the Trinity. So technically, yeah, that's over the course of Christian history, we would refer to that as heretical. But it's more than just that. The reason it's heretical is because it turns into a lot of false teachings and apostasy is drifting from the truth. Heretical is a self-willed opinion that opposes the truth. And so, you know, that when you, when you deny the Trinity, many times when people are not believers, they get off to some weird teaching. However, I know some people who they, they are called, you know, oneness, oneness Pentecostals, or uh, like what Marcus Rogers believes. And talking to them, here's what they believe. They, in their mind, they can't see how they think we're worshiping three different gods where God is one here. O Israel, the Lord, your God is one. And so oneness one, when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan, it was the father as the spirit is Jesus one. When Jesus was on the cross, it was just God. God was on the cross. Basically the father was not in heaven. So they, they think that we're worshiping three different gods. So see, it's not necessarily heretical, although it can be, it is a lack of, of understanding in theology under uh, around the Trinity. So their heart is, I don't want to worship three gods. Well, I would tell them and show them you're not worshiping three gods. You're worshiping the one God, Yahweh, who reveals himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so, see, in that case, I wouldn't call him heretical and apostasy you know, because a lot of the teachings he has is, are very solid. He's just hung up on this, this, this worshiping three gods thing. And, uh, he can, he can beat the drum about it. I think he's really wrong. And, uh, but also he teaches, you know, that you, everyone baptized in the Holy Spirit will be, uh, will receive the gift of tongues. And I mean, that's a whole nother podcast. I believe. When, when people are open, they will receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit, whatever those gifts may be, the gift of the speaking in tongues, the gifts of prophecy, word of wisdom, you know, open to that. And, but I don't, I don't necessarily think that, that speaking in tongues is always the sign of the overflowing, infilling baptism of the Holy Spirit. It can be one of them, but Paul said, you know, do all speak in tongues, do all heal. And so I think a lot more people could if they were open to it. Uh, so I think a lot of people are scared because of what they see on TV with some of these guys. Um, so if you guys have questions, let me know, just put them in the comments. 
Um, I'm going to try to get to some of them. So that's my thoughts on Francis Chan. That's my thoughts on Marcus Rogers. You know, I, I don't follow a lot of his sermons. So I think for a lot of the stuff, though, um, is, is pretty solid. And thank God he's standing up against this godless culture. Where are many of you? Where are many of you not saying anything and not fighting against Disney's agenda and the woke agenda? And um, so that's what you have to remember. When people like, let's say they deny the Trinity, why are they denying it? If, if it's because they don't fully understand the Godhead and they don't want to worship three gods. OK, well. Understand where they're coming from, and then you walk them through Scripture. You know, the Father spoke, the, the Holy Spirit descended, Jesus was there, Elohim, let us make man in our image in Genesis. Elohim is the plur plural nature of God, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you know, where God dwells, you know, is, 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 is there in heaven, Spirit, where Jesus came as flesh. And so we see one God revealing himself in three distinct persons of the Godhead. So, just because I post a, a video in about Marcus Rogers teaching on something else. I think what he, he posted about uh, T.D. Jakes, uh, what T.D. Jakes said about women um, and, and, and letting men lead again. And then so, you know, people think I'm heretical. It's just, it's it really their babies, to be honest with you. I don't know. I don't have a better word for it. They're baby immature believers who are just probably not filled with the spirit because they have no love, joy, peace, contentment, gentleness, love, kindness. Now you can have concerns and questions. Hey, what's your thoughts on this or why? Okay. I understand. Um, and uh, as a side note, funny thing about TD Jakes is I, uh, I was invited to speak at the Potter's house in 2000. I think it was 2003, and I wrote a book, What Works When Diets Don't, and I was just going to go speak to their large group of women on health and fitness. I think I saw the videotape. If you go to my YouTube channel and you watch that short clip um, from Prodigal to Pastor, there's a clip in there where I'm talking about fitness. That was filmed at the Potter's House. You can see the big the big um, uh, podium up there, and I know anything about their ministry. I didn't you know, not, not to know too much. And so before I go, though, everybody's warning me, you know, about name it and claim it and oneness Pentecostalism. I'm like, OK, so I take these handouts from from I forget his name, Christian Research Center. I think what I, I don't remember his name. It slipped me now, but he's actually switched now. He's like a Greek Orthodox um, Hank Hanegraaff. That's what and I don't know about that switch. It's have to ask him. But anyway, so I get there and I'm asking his elders. I'm like, OK, so what's this name and claim it? And they're like. Yeah, we don't believe that at all. You know, your faith must stand trial. People go through difficult things. You can't just, you know, genie's not, God's not a genie in a bottle. And I'm like, okay. And I asked them about the oneness Pentecostal. And they said, well, we, we know oneness and TD Jakes knows oneness Pentecostals, uh, but we're not oneness. Uh, but we associate with them. See guilt by association, guilt by association. We, we, they're friends of ours. We go to lunch or different things. So we've been thrown into that camp and listening to his messages in the 1998, 1999, manpower conferences, power, power, I would say one of the most powerful preachers that I've ever heard. But then I got dis disenchanted, like a lot of people, you know, with maybe his support for Obama and uh, the Democratic Party, kind of vague on gay marriage. And then, you know, you get popular and it, it, just some of the things he's saying. And, um, you know, so I don't I don't know where I haven't followed that ministry in probably two decades or so, but it just shows you that people had wrong information about him in the ministry. And I, I went and I talked to his people. I actually got to meet him. Me and my wife met him in his office and uh, just thanked us for coming and worshiping or coming and helping the women uh, and actually sat through the church service. It was a very powerful church service. Again, this is 2003, almost two decades ago. Uh, and then we come to, I posted something about Mark Driscoll and I'm a, I'm a heretic because I post something about Mark Driscoll. Well, I've done a lot of research on this and I know people from Acts 29. I almost joined Acts 29, but I couldn't sign off on on their uh, form, you basically had to say that you are reformed. You have to you have to uh, embrace all of the tenets of the reformed faith, from tulip and you know total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, perseverance of the saints. You have to embrace those. I said I can't embrace those. So I went to get gatherings. Friends of mine were there, and uh, Mark was heavy handed. 
um, Mark was like I would have been had God put me in my pastorate at, at 24. I think he started 24. And I would have been very similar to Mark at 24 because, you know, he came from, from a construction background. I came from a construction background, uh, hard growing up. You're, you know, you're fighting a lot and hard growing up. And I, I had alcohol and just the party scene. And so I'm, I just praise God he didn't call me to be a pastor at 24, 25, 26 because I would have. I would have crashed and burned. So I think Mark came into the ministry like I would, you know, rough and gruff, a man's man, you know, but then if you're not careful, if you're not broken, if you're not humble, if you're not spending time at the altar and just, you know, picking your leadership correctly and you can get heavy handed and you can begin to control and micromanage. And so without the filling of the spirit, the fullness of the spirit, the church environment can turn into a very controlling type of environment. And then, um, so I wouldn't, I, he's not heretical at all whatsoever. And then, you know, I think they paid $250,000. Um, and we could have did that. We actually could have did that with my books, not that much money, but you can purchase a certain amount of your books from the publisher. And if you purchase, that's what, how Rick Warren's book, uh, purpose driven life, that's how that skyrocketed a bestseller. So you buy a whole bunch of your books and it shoots you up in the bestseller list. So not a really Great thing to do. I mean, awesome marketing strategy strategy for a secular organization, but not really for a church. So, you, you know, you catch some heat by that. And we chose not to do it because we just publish the books ourselves. We don't go through a publisher. I don't, I don't, we don't look at ratings. You know, we give out thousands of free copies over the years. Free downloads are at our church website. Um, but plus, they're also for sale on Amazon and Kindle. Uh, come to find out you can't put them on Amazon, I don't think, for free. You know, there's printing costs and different things. So anyway, so Mark, you know, is just, just ruling that with the iron fist. And, and I would have been the same way. And so if you don't say broken and humble and pliable and teachable and learning, and then there's there's a lot with the plurality of elders. You know, you get a lot of elders in there, maybe differing opinions, and the ministry is skyrocketing. You know, you're like one of the top names in Christendom. Um, it's hard because knowledge puffs up, fame puffs up. And uh, so, he, but he's got a lot of great teachings. We disagree, I would say, on the um, total depravity and Calvinism. But other than that, you know, it, it, I don't know why they call these guys heretical. Same thing happened with James McDonald. You know, I was a big fan of his ministry, walk in the word and um, some leadership, internal struggles. But I think that the pastor is staying broken and humble, you know, it is, it is amazing. So anyway, is there any, uh, let's see questions you got coming in. I see Evelyn Britton. I think uh, Frank, you, you tag Frank, Frank Sontag. I like Frank Sontag. I was on his show at KKLA a few times. Uh, let's see. I'd like you to address tongues as also being a prayer language as well. Gary, yeah, that would be maybe a, a topic for a podcast. Um, and I think if you go to my website and put in tongues, I wrote a whole article about it. I actually taught on it for an hour. I actually didn't write an article. I taught on it for over an hour. And it, it also hit the, the news outlets, the, the, the national Christian media, um, <clears throat> because it, it said something like after 18 years of silence, you know, pastor confesses uh, the tongues issue. And so I opened up um, in that in, the, in that sermon. Again, I think you can find it on my website, shaneidleman.com, if you put in tongues uh, or, or, or search YouTube. But I said, because, you know, J John MacArthur's close to us. I have friends at his seminary. I've got his study Bible. I love that solid teaching. And I've got conservative friends. I've got charismatic friends. I've got Baptist friends and Pentecostal and, and all that. And uh, <clears throat> when I came back to the Lord in 1999, it an amazing, it's a life changing experience when you're baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, you're baptized at conversion, you know, if you want to use the right language, but there's just massive filling of the Holy Spirit that, uh, let me move this microphone, this massive filling of the Holy Spirit that took place. And my, I'm just worshiping and, 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 and the tongues comes out and, and, and this is coming from a, a charismatic, I mean, a, a conservative guy, you know, I, I, I don't worship, I don't raise my hands. I'm not the altar weeping, but boy, when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you and wrecks you, you know, that is something very interesting, but Paul's pretty clear on that. 
you know, do not speak in tongues at church. Somebody's going to come in. They're going to think you're out of your mind. For example, if I start speaking in Spanish, you know, Padre Nuestro de, ca- de Casa en Cielo Santificado, Sete Hombre Venga Nos Reino, Hágase Tu Vontad, Así en la Tetera, Como en Cielo, Pan Nuestro de Cada Día, Danoslo y Perdónanos. You, you're going to... There's no, there's po- it's pointless to you because it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. And so I believe people say private prayer language. Um, you know, it, it, Paul says he's edified, he's built up when speaking in tongues. And so I, I think it's definitely an, a, a known language and I think it edifies yourself uh, for sure. Uh, so Evelyn, I don't know if you're asking about the Frank Sontag show or you're just posting that. Um, let's see my thoughts on John MacArthur ministry. I think I just kind of you know, you know, um, spoke a little bit about that. And I want to be careful because all of us have cracks in the armor. Nobody has perfect theology. You've got R.C. Sproul believing in infant baptism and John MacArthur not. You've got John Piper believing in this, maybe on amillennialism, you know, don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. And then, you know, uh, MacArthur on premillennial and postmillennial and, you know, and so nobody, we don't all agree on the same non-essentials. We all agree on the essentials. So with uh, my thoughts on John MacArthur's ministry, obviously highly respected, you know, who am I to say anything? Uh, Incredible study Bible. However, when it gets to, um, and you can actually, I think it's one of our most requested videos on YouTube from 2016. (laughs) The title is A Pastor's Thoughts on John MacArthur's strange fire conference. So I went to that conference. I had to actually leave. It was just, it was pretty sad. They're throwing all charismatics in the same devil bus, you know, speaking tongues of the devil and all these charismatics. The problem is a lot of these guys have never experienced the radical life-changing power of the Holy Spirit. And so they're going to mock what they've never experienced. So I would say incredible ministry, lives are changed, great teacher. But when it comes to the, what I call the deeper things of the Holy Spirit, you won't see a lot of teachings on on fasting. Uh, you won't have any all night prayer meetings there. You won't have any time at the altar being broken before God. You they're kind of worried about the Holy Spirit. You can't cast out demons uh, anymore. I mean, you know, it's, so that there's there's a lot of a lot of stuff I disagree with, and it, and it has to do with the 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 giftings and the power of the Holy Spirit. So we can say we believe in the Holy Spirit. Of course we do. But unless you receive that incredible filling, that dunamis power, that anointing, that unction, um, you're going to, you're going to push away from why are they at the altar for an hour crying and weeping? And they have that same worship song on. Well, hello, that's thoroughly biblical. That's not brainwashing. That's Christ exalting. Uh, and so they're, they're, they, they, they don't like emotional worship. They don't like all night prayer meetings or even prayer meetings too much or, you know, fasting and never hear fasting, uh, that deeper thing, that deeper walk with the Lord. Uh, I remember it was actually John MacArthur who mocked, um, in Ian e. Bounds's book, Ian e. Bounds, he talked about John Fletcher, I think, who stained the breath of his walls with the, with the stained his walls with the breath of his prayers. Or as another guy, might not have been John Fletcher, I don't remember his name, praying John High possibly. He actually wore grooves into his floor after so many years of praying. And I've seen that before. And they, they he, John mocked that. He said, well, who, who, who does that? That's not realistic. You see, they're missing that fullness of the spirit. They're, they're missing that deeper life. So anyway, I can say I love and respect the guy. He's, he's, he knows way more than I know, but, um, definitely got some, 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 concerns with the deeper walk and the deeper fruit of the Holy Spirit. Um, let's see. Anybody else have any questions on those guilt by association? I'll see if any came in on Facebook. Uh, basically guilt by association. So um, on those things I mentioned earlier, you have to go back and, and rewind and listen uh, to um, Hey, Joe Harbaugh, any questions from you? Listen to my thoughts earlier, but you know, I'm not going to go to a, um, unity meeting with all these different faiths, like ecumenical come together. You know, I can't do that. Now, if you want to go to lunch and I'm going to tell you about Jesus, sure, I can do that. Or if I'm going to preach, I'm going to preach to this group. Okay. But I don't have to, I don't have to uh, capitulate. I don't have to, um, 
you know, gravitate towards what they believe. So it is hard. And then if I'm posting stuff, you know, let's say, because I have, I came out of Roman Catholicism. I was an altar boy. I went to Paraclete High School. And, um, you know, there's a lot that's, that's really works based, you know, going to a priest, confession, praying to Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women and the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, and perpetual virginity of Mary, and the uh, immaculate conception, purgatory, there's just so much, it is way, way off. So I wouldn't be posting sermons from priests, I wouldn't be posting, you know, those types of things or Mormonism. I mean, those, those are some big deals, but with Marcus Rogers, Francis Chin, uh, Mark Driscoll, you can go back and listen to the beginning of this. I commented on that. You know, I don't have a problem with these, these guys. They're not, they're, they're, they're fairly solid in this, in the area. So, um, let's see. Thank you. I was tagging Frank because Francis Chin means something to him. I wish they would have heard you on a show. Yes. I uh, love Frank. I was on Frank's show probably four or five years ago. Um, Somebody gave me, I've got Francis, I've texted him a few times to be on the podcast, but I think he's busy doing other things. I'd like to get Kirk Cameron on too. We've talked a little bit. Um, and even if I post his stuff, people say, you know, he's sold out or whatever, or Sean Foyt. Sean Foyt is a friend of mine. I'm going to see him in a few weeks. And um, we text back and forth, just encouraging each other. And because he was once with Bethel, can never, ever, 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 ever associate with him. Never, ever, 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 ever. Let me ever, ever, ever. Come on, guys. Let's wake up. Now, if you're, they're embracing weirdness and, you know, yeah, you got to draw some lines, but Sean came out from among them. He started doing all these worship services across the United States and being bold as a lion. We need that. You know, some things I don't, you know, I'm like, ah, I wouldn't do that. That might, that might has a little bit to do with your, your upbringing, uh, in charismatic circles. And so, yeah, I wouldn't do things that way. I wouldn't do that things that way, you know? And, and so we err on the side of grace. I'm talking about that this Sunday. We err on the side of grace. We fight for truth. We're, 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 we're peacemakers, but not capitulators. We don't capitulate. And, um, you know, I, I just think there's a lot of hard hearts out there and hard hearts are going to look through a, a very, very, very narrow, narrow filter. I mean, you hear some of these guys videos on YouTube that are King James only talk about, I don't know where their soul is going. I, it might be going to hell because they are so mean and so mean spirited. It's unbelievable. Uh, let's see, Evelyn, my thoughts on, I don't know Dave Jones. So you'd have to tell me more about him, but Bethel, um, you know, a lot of the same concerns all of you have. I've seen some of the weird videos. Um, but I mean, my friend, you know, Jim Garlow knows, uh, Bill Johnson and I like how Bill Johnson handled the passing of his wife and the stuff I saw people mocking him when his wife passed you guys, not you guys in general, but just the hard hearts. It's, it is so sad to, to watch a modern day Pharisee sink their ship, but yeah, I've got concerns. You know, I think they had that staff like a wizard staff during COVID or the, you know, angel globes or angel dust or, um, tunnel, fire tunnels. And I'm like, Oh gosh, this is not good. This is not good at all. But I've talked to people who went there and they're like, none of that happens. I've never seen any of that. I think it's these isolated things, but why doesn't Bill come out and say things against it and critic, you know, condemn it. And I think they're teaching on healing is a little bit too, you know, too radical. Um, almost like God's will is to heal everyone. And, um, so I have, I have the same concerns. I don't follow their ministry. I don't follow him. Um, and that's another question, you know, let's say our radio station or our church plays a couple songs, let's say from Kim Walker Smith or um, what's a song? Uh, Jen Johnson has a good song. Send me from Isaiah. Send me great lyrics, great songs. So sometimes we'll play a few other songs, but then people say, oh, you're endorsing it. Well, not really. I mean, what's a gray area? We, I, obviously, you're drawing the line you know, more, you're closer than I am. I, I'm, I'm like, okay, if the song's good, I talked to the worship leader, Kim Walker Smith, Sean Foyt, you know, um, uh, what's, um, Jeremy Riddle. I mean, some of the stuff he put post on Facebook, just solid, solid theology. I don't know that a person, so I'm careful. I just, I, I, I don't really have a great, you know, I don't have a great feeling based on a lot of the videos I saw. I uh, wish I could go there and spend time with people and talk to them. And, uh, but I don't have time for that either. So, uh, let's see any more questions on guilt by association, naming names, any names out there. Uh, Creflo dollar came out and said he's no longer for tithing. So we'll see where that goes. I believe Benny Hinn repented and restored his marriage. We'll see where that goes. Um, 
Kenneth Copeland, just, I see you guys ask, it's just any video I see on that guy, I do not have good feelings whatsoever. And uh, I actually know people who are friends with him in Texas, and, and I, I just tell them, I'm, guy is just interesting. Um, just the scary stuff he says and does, and it, it looks like his eyes are demonic sometimes. So, but again, I want to be careful. I, I'm not, I don't like going on name and names and things. Um, but you know, I think we're, sometimes we can, if the heart is right, we remove the plank, right? Pull the plank out of my eye first, then we can better assess. And I think it's okay to give people, um, uh, comments on some on who to follow, who not to follow. Uh, Steve Furnick, I would be careful with him too. I mean, all these guys, it's like go, go, go. Like Andy Stanley, you know, it's it's encouraging, motivating sermons. But are they are they are they? If they're not talking about, here's the thing. Here's my okay. Here we go. I'm just gonna open up again. Some of you already heard this. Joe Olstein, Steve Furnick, and um, you know Andy Stanley, and I know even people from my church don't like me talking about this. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get probably get a rebuke tomorrow, which is okay. You know that's their heart. But um, if you're a pastor and you're not gonna talk about repentance, when Jesus said go and preach repentance, you're not gonna talk about the blood of Christ when His blood was shed for the remission of the sin of the world. When you're not going to talk about judgment, when Jesus Himself talked more about judgment than heaven, more about hell than heaven. You, to me, are not a pastor. You're not a pastor if you're not going to talk about the hard truths as well as the pleasant truths. Of course, you might be more of a grace guy, a love guy. I got it. Okay, hang out there for a while. But how dare you never talk about judgment, wrath, repentance, the blood of Christ. God talks about it. God talks about it all the time in his word. Jesus talked all about it. The problem is they, they're not filled with the spirit. They're not filled with the spirit. They're just motivational speakers. I got to build my audience and, and I'm gauging things by book sales. And it's sad, you know, but it is what it is. Um, let's see, Heather, Heather Eskridge. I think I pronounced your last name right. Have you been on Remnant Radio? Uh, I think, is that the same as Remnant News? Maybe you could give a thumbs up there. Um, I don't know, but Todd Coconado, if that's who you're talking about, yeah, he's a great friend of mine. We text probably every other day and just encourage each other. Um, his gifting, his ministry, that guy knows more about current affairs and America and politics and the gold standard and, 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 and CERN, C-E-R-N, this, this portal and, um, you know, the World Health Organization and bite. I mean, his, his, his knowledge of this stuff is incredible. I just get, I just get a headache. I mean, a good headache. I just, just in awe of listening to some of these guys talk about all these things. Cause I have thoughts on, on CERN, you know, that portal thing that they're building. It's just scary stuff. I mean, all you have to do is look at the opening ceremony where they look like, you know, demonic, ele demonic demons. And then you look at what they're trying to accomplish. You look at their logo on things, 666, and even the World Health Organization. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to get more information before I teach on it. But, um, you know, if Biden pulls an emergency type fire alarm in the World Health Organization and we, we sign up with that, we could shut down. They could shut down everything, even fuel production, fuel production. You know, why is Bill Gates? And I, I didn't believe this at first, so I've been researching it. You know, you want to double, triple check. You know, why is he buying farmland? Getting, you know, these guys have agendas. Um, and, and climate change, do people, do I believe in climate change? I believe that the climate is changing according to how God changes things. It's not out of, out, out of whack. Um, now could, you know, the, 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 the carbon and the, the fuel and the emissions, could it be damaging the environment? There's a, there's a good chance of that, probably. But see, the climate change has an agenda. It's not real science. It's, it's false narratives to get us to capitulate and, if we're already having a hard time on the electrical grid, right? How are you going to add millions of cars charging on the electrical grid? It makes no sense to me. So there's just so many questions there. So yes, I do know of, um, of remnant radio. Is that the right one you're talking about, Heather? Uh, let's see. Are the offices of apostle and prophet still for us today? You guys are going deep here. I'm going to have to turn this into a podcast. Um, well, let's, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. Paul said that to some he's given to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, you know, preachers, pastors, that whole list there. And so 
it's actually not a confusing topic. It's, 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 it's what happens is hyper charismatics take it and they put a capital A. I'm an apostle. I'm apostle, apostle, or whatever. You know, I'm apostle such and such. I'm apostolic ministry. I'm apostolic, you know, globally. And, and they just, man, it's all self promotion. They ruin the whole thing and it gives people the wrong idea. Apostle. So the office of apostle, no, I would say that the office of the 12 apostles is, is, is ended. And the prophet, capital P, the Old Testament prophets, John the Baptist, prophet, the prophetic voice who wrote scripture is, is over. So a prophetic word does not supersede scripture. It comes underneath it. However, there, when you say there are apostles today, the word apostle, if you look up in the Greek, is actually a sent one. So if I'm sent to plant churches, I'm going to be apostolic in my calling. Or if I'm preaching hard prophetic messages, hello, then I'll be prophetic in my nature. And God gives us a prophetic call. Uh, Leonard Ravenhill, um, A.W. Tozer. And you can even look at Whitfield, you can look at Wesley, you can look at John Bunyan, you can look at Martin Luther, you can look at Eurek Zwingli, uh, John Knox. Uh, a lot of these guys have prophetic callings. And that's why, that's because prophetic callings, they were usually statesmen, they were authors, they were preachers, and they were reformers. So you'll often see somebody with a prophetic gifting, you know, speaking the hard truths, calling the nation back. They're going to be authors reformers, uh, and, uh, whatever the other one said, authors, reformers, statesmen, and, um, preachers did that, that fire brimstone preaching. And so, yeah, in that sense, I agree that there are, um, apostles and prophets still for us today, but not capital letters. They're not promoting themselves. And if somebody is called prophetically, like God will give them maybe visions or dreams from time to time to, to warn the church. And they're, they're spending time with God. They're broken. They're fasting. And, and they're, you know, they're, they're going to weigh that word carefully. And actually Paul, that's why he says, if somebody gives a prophetic word, that word is supposed to come underneath the leadership of the church, and they're supposed to discern that spirit, discern that prophetic word. Uh, let's see. Uh, thank you. What is that? Carla, thank you for the encouragement there. That is good to know. Praise God. Um, why aren't more churches teaching Bible prophecy and end times events? Um, you know, we're, I'm asked that question sometimes, and I say, well, just go listen to Jack Hibbs. I'll refer you to Jack Hibbs. Um, I think what happens is I try to tie it in sometimes. I actually I'm, I'm considering doing revelation. I think as a pastor, at least what I do, I have so much I want to say. I mean, I could talk up there for for 48 hours nonstop. But then I want to spend time with God. For example, a, a text that's been on my heart a lot is is Isaiah 60, Arise and Shine. And I'm hoping to preach on that soon. And so God will give a person a, that 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 message. And so it might be for marriage or parenting or repentance. And and they're just their focus right now is not on Bible prophecy or end times events because that can take away. Now you can tie in repentance, you can tie in all this, but Bible prophecy, eschatology is kind of its own thing. So it's cool to have teachings like that. Like Jack Hibbs has that Wednesday night. He teaches quite often on it. That's his wheelhouse. That's his gift. But then talking to him, some people ask him, why don't you teach more on repentance? Why don't you teach more on this? Well, see, that's, that's his gifting. And so I, I think we just don't have enough hours in the day. We don't have enough Sundays to preach. And so we, we talk, um, we talk about what God puts on our heart. Sometimes that involves prophecy. Sometimes it doesn't. I think a lot of people are worried too, or not worried, but, um, the book of revelation is, is a bit challenging. <clears throat> how much is allegory? How much is literal? Uh, it was written to the early church, but it's also written to us. Uh, how much happened in 70 AD with Titus, the conquering of Jerusalem. Some of it did. And so, you know, it's, it's one of those territories I'm hoping to go into soon. Uh, American gospel, the movies, the American gospel, um, Pat, uh, yeah. And I actually know the producer, I texted him a couple weeks ago and, um, <clears throat> just wondering if he heard about, you know, like Todd White, his change of heart. And so I, I think, I think they're, I, I like watching them. I like Paul Washer. I like the American gospels, but American gospel movies, but I don't see, I don't see a, a, a humble heart like, oh man, we missed it. You know, let's say Todd White has repented and is, is back on the right path. Let's just say, I'm just assuming, you know, or not assuming, I'm just saying they're not going to correct that. 
they're not going to correct that or they're not going to, um, you know, Benny Hinn completely changes his ways. They're not going to correct that. So you, I just don't see a lot of lack of humility there. Uh, I could be wrong. But then American Gospel number two is um, that was pretty good. You know, he interviewed Doug Padgett, um, Rob Bell, uh, Tony Jones. Um, what was the other one? Um uh, yeah, a lot of those guys, and to, to, to me, those guys are apostate. They are heretical. Uh, they don't know the Lord. They, they are to be called out as apostates. Uh, they are leading people astray. And that's, that's just the truth. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, Campola, Campola. Um, and so he was showing what they believe, and then he was bringing in like a Paul Washer to show, boom, the truth. And uh, the only thing is on American Gospel number two, it could give people the wrong impression because it kind of looked like you're, you know, okay, well, both could be true. But I know in order to get those guys on, he probably had to let them share their side of it. And my heart breaks for them because it seems like they're angry at the church, angry at God. How could God throw anybody to hell? And and these guys, Tony Jones, Doug Padgett, uh, Brian McLaren, Rob Bell, I mean, they are not, they are not, in my opinion, they are not Christians. They are apostate. They are heretical, bringing destructive teachings into the church. And so he exposed that, I believe, on that um, I started fasting and a lot of breakthrough came in my life. That is awesome. Rosie, uh, let's see any questions on that. I'm gonna have to go here pretty soon. We've been going a while. I might lose my battery here. I just want to see if there's any last minute ones that are coming in. Uh, many don't believe in the gifts, power prophecy today that go to John MacArthur's church. Yes, I'm, I'm absolutely well, well aware of that. We've actually had people leave our church and go down there. Um, and for that very reason, you know, but see all churches, there's a church in our area too, that's conservative, part of John MacArthur's group. <clears throat> and, you know, people, there's different denominations for a reason. People just feel comfortable if they're, yeah, they're not going to go deeper. I got it, but they're, they're, they're conservative. They're going to, you know, they know what to expect. They're not going to, they're not going to be asked. They're not going to open up the altar. They're not going to hang out at worship for 45 minutes. And, and people weeping and crying out to God. There's not a, a revival atmosphere. It's more of a just a, you know, by the book atmosphere. And that's where people feel comfortable. And so that's why I think you got to have a lot of different churches. And then you have hyper charismatic churches who call Westside Christian Fellowship too conservative. You're not allowing tongues all the time. You're not having people run up and down the aisle. You're not, you're not just like a circus. If it's odd, it's God. Anything goes. No, that's not biblical at all whatsoever. That's not healthy either. Um, but he, you know, certain people gravitate to, to those kind of churches. So anyway, I hope this helped. If you guys have questions, uh, more for podcast ideas, shoot me an email. Uh, or actually the, the administrators who check the email at shaneidleman.com. And uh, I would love to definitely uh, feature that question next time. Thank you. If you've enjoyed this episode of Idleman Unplugged, be sure to send us your ideas and topics for future episodes of the podcast. You can send us an email at westsidechristianfellowship.org or shaneidleman.com. Again, my name is Luke Duncan, and I am your host of Idleman Unplugged. Thank you for listening to us today, and join us again on the next episode. Thank you for listening to Idleman Unplugged. For more information, visit us at shaneidleman.com. Again, that's shaneidleman.com. This podcast is part of the Edify Podcast Network. Edify is a faith-inspiring app that brings together thousands of the best Christian podcasts in one place for your listening enjoyment. Cut through the noise and grow your faith by diving into the world's top Christian podcasts today. Download the Edify app for free from the App Store or Google Play or by going to edify.app. That's E-D-I-F-I dot app. El Paseo Publications proudly supports the Westside Christian Fellowship Radio Network. We are committed to quality in Christian publication. Free ebooks can be found at westsidechristianfellowship.org under free ebooks. Books such as What Works for Men and What Works for Young Adults will help readers understand that the obstacles ahead are never greater than God's power to take you through. Books such as What Works When Diets Don't and Feasting and Fasting demonstrate how health can be achieved from a biblical perspective. Other free books such as 
answers for a confused church and desperate for more of God show the importance of fully surrendering our lives to Christ. And One Nation Above God is a must read for anyone concerned about the direction of America. Again, free downloads of these ebooks are available at westsidechristianfellowship.org. We are happy about partnering with the Westside Christian Fellowship Radio Network.